Hi friends, welcome back. Thanks for clicking in today on our pastime. I'm Tom and today I'd like to start a review on the Ryobi 18 volt 1 plus inflator deflator. I've had a chance to use this a few times around the house and it seems to work as it promises. Today we're just going to go over a few things about it and give an overall review. Let's get into the specs. The, this is a Ryobi One Plus 18 volt inflator deflator. It has a few features. It has an auto fill feature with auto shut off. So you can use it hands free. You don't need to babysit it while it's actually working. You can uh, set it to a specific air pressure, walk away, and when it reaches that PSI the pressure, you can, it will actually shut off by itself and it has a nice digital display on there to let you know what the pressure is. It has high pressure inflation. That's one of the features that it lists and it goes from 0 to 150 PSI and it can inflate you know any car tire, tractor tires, lawn and garden tires, you know anything you have around the house that has a pneumatic air stem. So it also besides High pressure, it also has high volume inflation, which allows you to pump up your air mattresses or your pool toys. I haven't had a chance to use that feature because I have, I have an air mattress somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure, so I haven't pulled that out or searched for it to see how it, this performs on that. But it basically, it, it, in the specs, it says it will inflate a twin mattress in 30 seconds. So... I'll leave that up to somebody else to do, prove or disprove that. Once again, it says that it has one of the features is the Easy View Precision Digital Gauge. And let's see, let put the battery in. Let's see, turns on and it has some features you can uh, go up and down figure out which gate, which tire pressure you need based on what the tire pressure is uh, specified on the tire and pump it up to uh, push that, push the plus and minus to reach the desired pressure and then press start and walk away. One of the features it lists is the brass threaded tire chuck. Now it's, it touts that as being ease of use. I might disagree with that part of it because this is the tire chuck they're talking about and you have to screw that onto the valve stem rather than the traditional, what I call the traditional tire chuck where you push it over the valve stem, stem and then clamp it down over with the little lever. Uh, I would think that would be ease of use compared to having to thread this on. And I actually ran into a problem uh, with one of my valve stems being um, a little bit bent and this would not screw down over the valve stem so I could not blow up that tire. Whereas if I'd had the, the, you know, the, the lever tire chuck, it probably would have gone down over the valve stem and I could have pumped up that tire. But I could not do that with this. So that's the only thing I've found disappointing with this so far is this tire chuck is threaded rather than the traditional lever tire chuck. It says it will inflate a car tire in four minutes from flat to fully pressured at 35 PSI. The other thing it lists are right here is the onboard tool storage it has a ball needle and pinch valve nozzle and and also has the uh, inflation tools as well to blow up your mattress so those are the features one other feature i like about this um this one plus is that of course any 18 volt one plus battery will fit into this this works with any 18 plus battery from Ryobi. I have actually have the three amp hour batteries and these also have the uh, little indicator light on the front that tells you how 
charged up it is. So that's a, a good way to also test this to see how much power it actually uses or uh, charge it actually takes to pump up the tires. We'll see if we can do several tires on one battery and how efficient this actually is and how quick it actually blows up the tires if we can measure that as well. So let's get to it. For purposes of this video uh, or this test for the Ryobi inflator deflator, I have released or deflated tires on my John Deere tractor while it spends the winter inside. Mm, that's not an original cap. Hmm. So let's see how this performs. I've taken the... Now, this has a threaded tire chuck, so we must thread it to the valve stem of the tire. This is the ease of use function. So now, put it on securely. Now we can check the mode. All right, it's a little bit bright. Okay, let's select our mode. Oops, here we go, tire. So it points to the tire that little arrow there so I know you're in the right mode now let's go up to 14 PSI Oop, 20 oh, risk of explosion at 20 14 now all we have to do is hit the start pumped up. That was real time. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Well, let's see if this ease of use thing doesn't let too much air out. All right. So that's a relatively small tire. A 16 by 6.5. Try my rear tire. Let's see how much does that need. Now we'll do a 24 by 12. That's also pretty flat. Let's see. This goes up to 10 psi. button to get to 10. Now I just need to hit the start button, which is right there.
was real time as well. All right, and that was a 24 by 12. About twice the size of the other one. All right, on to another tire. This tire is from a lawn tractor, a garden tractor that has not appeared on my channel as of yet. This is my first garden tractor, and we may be doing a project with it pretty soon to get it up and going. It hasn't run for, oh, I'd say it hasn't run for since 2012. And uh, it's been sitting down in my cellar. Tires are completely flat. And I, it's a good opportunity to blow up the tires with the new inflator. These, this rear tire is a 23 by 8.5 dash 12 and it requires 12 psi so let's pump it up let me know if you want to see a, pro a video featuring this tractor and uh, this garden tractor and uh, getting it back in usable condition it's not that far off it's in pretty good shape it's always been garaged out of the weather so it shouldn't, it's got a 20 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine, um, oil filter, all that good stuff. It's always treated me pretty well. This one has been used very hard. And well, it's, anyway, if you want to see a video about this tractor, let me know. Leave a comment. All right, so now let's turn this back on. Of course, the light's too bright. Not good for filming. Mode is still in higher mode. And let's go up to 12. Let's get it into focus. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right beside my water heater, if that's coming out uh, on this camera in the video. Okay, we're at 12. Now let's start.
right, this one also takes 12 PSI, so we're all set. Just to screw on the tire chuck. Oh, not sure about this one. This has some pretty bad, this tire has some pretty bad checking on the tire. But we'll give it a shot. Down here it's uh, got a pretty bad check on it. We'll see if it will pump up. It's all set to go. All we gotta do is hit the start button. Success. That was quick. And this is a 16 by 6.5. I noticed my uh, John Deere 828D has a flat tire. Didn't you know it? This is this one was actually flat. <laughs> Without a I didn't uh, pre-flatten this one. This one was actually flat. So let's pump that up. It says it needs 20 PSI, but I'm only going to put the 12 in that it's already set at. That will be plenty for purposes of this video. This is a 4.8 by 8. This shouldn't take long at all. All right, hit the start button. Boy, that was real quick. All right, on this video, we're under a tarp because it's raining out. In February, it's raining out, and it's, I don't know if you can see, it's 40 degrees out on February 3rd. So, to keep the camera from getting wet, I'm going to film under a tarp. This is a uh, 8.3 by 24 tire on my Farmall tub on an 8 by 24 rim. So we'll see how the cup, how the pump does on this tire. Not sure if this is the valve stem that's compromised. Yeah, this one is. I'm not sure this is going to work on this rim, but we'll give it a shot. This is where the ease of use function is uh, fails, I think, on this. It's not, well, maybe I can get it on there. Sorry for the... Well, let's see what we got. Remember? No, it doesn't remember because it's cut off. Twenty-five? No, we don't want twenty-five. We only want twelve. I don't know if you can see that. Light is not good for filming purposes.
We're going to put 10 pounds in this to see if it'll take 10 pounds. All right. I think that actually made a seal on the tire. Valve stem on that one. Oh well. We're on the other side of the tractor now. We've got a good connection. Um, I don't know if you can see. We got two and a half pounds of pressure. Uh, PS, yeah, pressure. That's what we're registering for air in this tire. This tire is pretty flat. Let's uh, put 10 pounds in here and see what happens. Oops. Got 10. 10. Let's go. Really big tire. A lot bigger than the tractor tire, little garden tractor tires we did. Um, yeah, still got plenty of power. So I thank you for watching today. This has been a quick review of the Ryobi 18 volt one plus inflator deflator. I like it, except for the tire chuck on good, uh, well conditioned and well-maintained valve stems, it works really well. Uh, I'm impressed with it, I like it, and I'm gonna hang on to it. And I would recommend anybody who is looking for an inflator, deflator, who especially want somebody who has pool toys and air mattresses, this is probably the unit you want. This actually, this inflator actually is replacing my old Ryobi, the old version of the Ryobi inflator. Um, what happened on why it's replacing this one? This one still works fine, except for one problem. The uh, tire chuck on this one wore out, so it does it no longer clamps and holds on to the uh, tire for the valve stem on tires. So you have to actually hold it on the whole time, and sometimes it still doesn't make a good, good tight fit. So it it's pretty much at the end of its usefulness unless I get a new tire chuck and then I think that actually would work fine still 
This one, this one I've had, let's see, I've had this one since uh, 2008, and it's worked every time I've asked it to, and it's pumped up probably, I bet this has pumped up over, you know, a couple hundred tires anyway, and it's, and air, air mattresses too, and, you know, different sports balls and different things like that. Anything, anything I've asked it to do, it's always done without question. It's never overheated. It's always worked very well. This one also goes up to 150 PSI. And it will also, the thing I like about Ryobi is I've owned Ryobi tools for, uh, since 2007 of the 18 volt ones anyway. And the new 18 volt lithiums work in the old tools as well. So uh, that's one reason I stick with Ryobi. They haven't changed their batteries in what, eight, 10, what, 14 years, 15 years. So, so that's one reason I, I have Ryobi. Now the Ryobi tools are not contractor grade, I grant you that. But for a qualified homeowner like myself, they work just fine. And I would, as a qualified homeowner, I would have a very hard time wearing, wearing out a Ryobi tool, in my opinion and in my experience. So if you're looking, somebody who's looking for a, a cordless tool uh, or a cordless tool brand and you haven't yet been able to make up your mind, sure, you could go with the more expensive Milwaukee or Rigid even is a higher end um, Ryobi version actually. You could go with Black & Decker. I would stay away from Black & Decker. Even DeWalt, you could go up to De DeWalt. There's nothing wrong with DeWalt. DeWalt's a more of a contractor grade tool as, uh, as is rigid. But if you're just an average qualified homeowner such as myself, you're gonna be spending more money than you need to, probably two or three times more money than you need to. You'll never wear out those tools but you'll never, you're never going to wear out these tools either. They're going to last you as long as you need them. So I would stick with Ryobi. I would stay away from the old, the cheaper brands that you might pick up at, say, Harbor Freight. I have tried the Harbor Freight brands. And if you pay attention to Harbor Freight, what I've noticed is after a couple years, they change the brands. They change some of the brands even change their batteries. So the older the brand is, the newer batteries may not fit the older versions of that same brand. And that's what I've run into. So, you know, I went away from Ryobi just a little bit to try the Harbor Freight stuff. It worked fine until the batteries went. Went back to get a new battery. No luck. The batteries had changed design, would not fit in the old tools anymore. So you had to buy a whole new tool. And at that point, you're spending just as much money as if you would have bought a Ryobi tool. Now, I'll tell you, I've gone through, I still have one original battery from 2007 of Ryobi that still works fine. It doesn't charge up a hole to charge quite as long as it used to, but it still charges. And that's from 2007. That's the NICAD battery system as opposed to lithium ion. And then I, the other battery that came with my original set did wear out and I went to Batteries Plus and they, they at Batteries Plus, I'm not sure if they still do it, but they had repacked um, versions of the 18 volt Ryobi batteries and I bought one of those for about $10 less than I could buy a brand new Ryobi battery for. So I went that route and that one still charges up just fine after about, I'd say, I think I got that in 2011. And that one's been fine ever since. But th these um, lithium ion ones, what I like about them is they hold their charge right up until they're ready to quit. And when they quit, they quit. Uh, they don't really slow down and wear down over t when you get to the end of them, end of the charge, they just stop. As opposed to those, the you know, you'll hear the drawdown on the battery after when it gets close to being done. So, but these also have, these also have a battery, the battery indicator 
which tells you how much charge is left. And that's that's kind of neat. So when you pick up a tool for the first time, the battery's in it, you can check to see how much is left in it. Or if you're blowing up a bunch of tires, you can see how much how much charge it took to take to uh, blow up a, a certain tire. Today we reviewed the Ryobi 18 volt one plus inflator deflator. Great little tool, does what it promises and works great. So I, at this point, if you haven't already, you could give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, that would be great. And you can also share the video if you wouldn't mind. In a future video, Coming up, we are going to review another Ryobi tool. As you may have noticed off to my left, I have a couple other boxes here of small little Ryobi 18 volt one plus tools that I've recently acquired. And I will be making a few videos coming up reviewing those as well. If you want to subscribe, you'll get to see those. Or if you just do a search later for Ryobi review, you'll probably see my review on these other tools so today that's gonna about do it thank you for watching this is tom at our pastime saying thanks and we'll see you again real soon bye bye